today we'll be discussing about penicillin G and penicillin V so before moving to the topic proper we have to understand what is penicillin so penicillin is the first antibiotic to be used clinically and it has been in use since 1941 AD and it was initially synthesized from the fungus but now it is uh, produced uh, artificially and uh, these drugs or this antibiotic has beta lactam ring so it falls under the beta lactam antibiotics the mechanism of action of penicillin is that it inhibits the cell wall biosynthesis by specifically inhibiting the transpeptidase enzyme that catalyzes the final step in the cell wall biosynthesis uh, thus uh, it inhibits the cross-linking of the peptidoglycan which is necessary for the synthesis of the cell wall finally when the cell is wall is not synthesized the bacteria will die so the penicillin can be classified into various categories including natural penicillin which include penicillin G and penicillin V next group is penicillin resistant or anti-staphylococcal penicillin which include methicillin, nafcillin, oxycillin the next group is extended spectrum penicillin which include amino penicillins like ampicillin, amoxicillin and carboxypenicillins like ticarcillin and carvinicillin similarly uridopenicillins like piperacillin and mesocillin but in this video we'll be just talking about the differences and the similarities of the penicillin G and penicillin V so this chart will help us to understand the differences and the similarities between penicillin G and the penicillin V so penicillin G and penicillin V both are natural penicillins they are called natural because they were initially derived from the fungus so penicillin G is also called as benzyl penicillin and the penicillin V is the phenoxymethyl penicillin so most of the time we are confused about what is G penicillin or what is V penicillin so basically V penicillin or the phenoxymethyl penicillin is the uh, penicillin which, is, which can be used orally and penicillin G it is either used intravenous or intramuscular penicillin, penicillin G was initially developed and later penicillin V was developed so the penicillin G or the benzyl penicillin is available in the three different preparations and uh, these three preparations are aqueous preparation, procaine preparation and the benzathione preparation uh, this aqueous uh, penicillin G is available either as penicillin G sodium or penicillin G potassium and uh, it is usually used intravenously and the during and the it's a uh, given 6 to 12 hourly and the next preparation of the ven uh, benzyl penicillin G is penicillin G procaine this procaine penicillin is longer acting than the aqueous form and uh, it is given intramuscularly 12 to 24 hourly and the longest acting penicillin is the third preparation of the benzyl penicillin G that is benzathine penicillin G and it is given intramuscularly every two to four weeks and uh, this uh, penicillin V which is the oral preparation is usually given in the dose of 250 to 500 milligrams 6 to 12 hourly so on summarizing we can say that natural penicillin can be either the penicillin G or the penicillin V. Penicillin V is the oral preparation which is given in the 250 to 500 milligrams 6 to 12 hourly whereas penicillin G is the given either intravenous or intramuscular and it has got three preparations aquas, procaine and the benzathine. Benzathine and procaine are longer acting and they are given intramuscular whereas aquas is short acting which is given intravenous. So the mechanism of resistance uh, to these penicillins um, the resistance to this penicillin is usually due to the production of penicillinase by the bacteria uh, this enzyme basically opens the beta lactam ring of this penicillin and renders them inact inactive and these drugs are, fall under category b for the pregnancy and they are excreted in the breast milk uh, during lactation so the common use is uh, include the streptococcal infection, pneumococcal infection, meningococcal infection, similarly gonorrhea, syphilis, leptospira, diphtheria, and also in the rheumatic fever prophylaxis. There are other uh, various uses also. And the common adverse effects include hypersensitivity reaction, 
Sometimes it can be severe, leading to anaphylaxis. It can cause interstitial nephritis, seizure, anemia, and this uh, typical uh, two reactions which can occur include the Jarvis Heisman reaction and the positive Coombs reaction. So thank you very much for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel for more videos.